God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin study in the 21st chapter of the book of Genesis. I am so happy that all of you join in to watch this ministry. I want you to know that I do appreciate you and I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, God is yet blessing this ministry and I'm grateful to Him for what He is doing. Thank God that our listening audience is expanded, expanding. I do apologize to you. I took a couple of days off. Uh, I had pressing things that I needed to do, and, and God blessed us to accomplish those things, plus get enough rest. I tell you, uh, I'm learning over the years that you have to get enough rest, otherwise other things will start to crumble. So I, I took a couple of days off, and I do uh, apologize to you that we're standing and waiting attentively to hear this ministry, but yet we're back on track. I did I did put up a, a rebroadcast, and uh, but today uh, you'll be hearing a fresh message from the, from the Lord today, and I thank God for you to stay with us. I realize you could, uh, uh, you have many things to do and many other ministries on the internet, on television, on radio, and all of these places, uh, but we thank God for the loyal members that listen to this ministry. Well, shall we begin our study today in verse 1 of chapter 21, the Bible reads, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Well, what did, he, what did he say? Now, we read about it in, in our previous lessons. He, he uh, had uh, uh, sent the angels, and they told Sarah that she was going to bear a child, or told Abraham that his wife was going to uh, bear a child. And, and the, the miracle part of all of this, Sarah was like 90 years old, and, and Abraham 99 years old at the time when they heard the message. Uh, when the child was delivered, they were, uh, 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 you know, a year older, Abraham being 100 years old, and, and and uh, Elizabeth, um, uh, Sarah being uh, being ninety years old. So can you under, can you understand uh, the 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 magnitude of what had just happened? I'll read it again. And the Lord visited Sarah as He had said, uh, and the Lord did unto Sarah as He had spoken. In other words, she conceived a child. Uh, verse two: For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age and the set time of which God had spoken to him. Well, let's read verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. And can you understand? Get the specifics. They, they, they write, uh, this writer, which was Moses, uh, wrote down specifics because you got to understand, Abraham had another child. Uh, uh, by, his, by the bondwoman Hagar, he had another child. Can you get the specifics here? Uh, they want you to know which child this was and who he is. As I read verse 3 again, and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Verse 4, And Abraham circumcised his son, uh, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Well, this was a covenant now. Uh, Abraham fulfilling the covenant that, he, that uh, uh, God made with him, and he made with God. Uh, he had his son circumcised after he was eight days years old. In verse 5, And Abraham was a hundred years old, and his son Isaac was born unto him. A hundred years old. Can you imagine father and a child at a hundred years old? In verse, verse 6, And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, so that all the, that here will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have, have nursed children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Can you imagine? Who would have said it? Uh, uh, we, we say in the day that we live, who would have thought it? But who would have grasped this? That uh, at their age, they would have a child. But you have to understand, when, when God is in the equation, all things are possible. In verse 8, And the child grew and was, was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast that same day that Isaac was weaned. Well, shall we... Uh, uh, well, shall we uh, read in verse 9, but can you understand they made a, a, a great feast when the child was weaned. Can you understand they knew how to celebrate and, and uh, uh, milestones they knew how to do. And, and uh, most of it was in worship and adoration to God for what he's doing. Uh, but each milestone, uh, they 
did something, and, 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 and we'll reread verse 8, and the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned, a great feast, and when Isaac was weaned, now, now you know, we, uh, we don't do anything like that in the day that we live, we just glad he's off the bottle or off the breast, uh, but they, they, they uh, uh, gave a great feast at this time, let's read in verse 9, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, uh, whom she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, uh, Ishmael was the older child, uh, and she saw the older child mocking the, the younger child. Uh, and it happens all the time, and not only in, in the uh, split families, uh, uh, whatever you want to call the family that that uh, that have children from two mothers, or uh, uh, two fathers, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, you find mocking kids just do that. Even if they went to the same biological palate, uh, parents, uh, many times the older children will mock the younger ones. Uh, and I ought to know somebody because I'm the youngest of five siblings. Uh, so that younger that younger boy, uh, he, gets, he catches it every now and then. Most of the time it'll make him tough when he gets grown. Uh, but he has to catch it. He's got to be mocked by the, uh, by the older ones. He gets all the hammer down from the older one and all these type of things. Uh, well, uh, Sarah saw the, saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom he had born unto Abraham, mocking. He was mocking Isaac. Uh, well, let's read in verse 10. Uh, Wherefore said uh, she said unto Abraham, uh, Cast this bondwoman and her son, uh, uh, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heirs with my son, uh, even with Isaac. Uh, well, get that now. Uh, Sarah saw all of this and it stirred anger up in her. Well, it was animosity there uh, uh, before. Uh, you got to understand this is not the first time that uh, that Hagar was cast out of this house. Uh, well, she ran for her life on one another occasion because uh, uh, because of a situation of the situation. And here in verse ten, uh, 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 Sarah was going to cast her out. Uh, let's read it again. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, uh, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. Not just a woman, but cast her son out too. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heirs with my son, uh, even with Isaac. Uh, well, can you can you get the picture? The rage of Sarah. It was uh, it was animosity there, uh, and, and uh, 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 even stemming back from uh, uh, from shortly after Ishmael was born. There was animosities there. So, so you got to understand, a lot of things goes on, a lot of things are going on, uh, and here, uh, this is what Sarah was going to do. She wanted to cast out the bondswoman. Let's read verse 11. Huh? And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And you got to understand that. Uh, because of his son, you got to understand he loved his son. Uh, he loved his son Ishmael, uh, and it grieved him. Uh, but you know, sometimes to keep peace in the house, so keep peace with your spouse. Sometimes you do a, a let be done some things that you don't want to do. In verse 11 again, and the thing was very grievous, grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. In verse 12, and God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondswoman and all that Sarah had said unto thee, uh, hath, all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac uh, shall thy seed be called. Uh, well, uh, in other words, God let him know, you go ahead and do what your wife said. And you got to understand, Abraham, uh, he, he listened to the Lord. Uh, and that's one thing he always did. He had faith in God and uh, enough faith in him to do what God had commissioned him to do. Uh, and the, the word of the Lord as I, as I read, and God said unto Abraham in verse 12, Let it be not grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondswoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto her, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be blessed. Well, uh, there was something going on here. The blessings, uh, uh, the, the, the blessings were coming through Isaac. Uh, now, now, get the picture now. Uh, I, I talked to you about that, that before. God 
God can bless whoever he will. Uh, he can bless those, uh, but the covenant is a key word here. The covenant that God made uh, through Abraham shall all the nations of the world be blessed and so forth. Uh, that covenant, uh, Isaac was the covenant bearer, the one that's going to carry on uh, that covenant uh, with God. Well, uh, um, uh, shall I read again, hearken unto her, for Isaac shall uh, thy son be called, uh, verse 13, and also the son of the bondwoman uh, will I make, make a nation uh, because of thy seed. In other words, God is letting Abraham know uh, through a prophetic, uh, uh, a prophetic voice now. Uh, he's hearing the voice of God. Uh, these things have not transpired yet. Number one, the children. Uh, uh, Ishmael was not a grown man. He was older than Isaac, uh, I, but they both were young, young lads. Uh, and can you understand the grief that might have been over Abraham, uh, but God consoled him and told him everything was going to be all right, uh, and told him that, uh, 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 that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh, in other words, through Isaac, uh, uh, you're going you're gonna to re receive the recognition to you. Uh, through Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh, well, uh, and, uh, and verse 13, and also the son of the bondwoman I will make a nation uh, because he is thy seed. Uh, in other words, I'm going to bless him as well. Uh, I'm going to do something with him as well. I'm going to make, make him a, a, a nation uh, because he is thy seed. In verse 14, uh, and Abraham rose up early in the morning uh, and took bread and, and, uh, and uh, uh, a skin of water uh, and gave unto Hagar putting it on her shoulder, and gave her the child, and sent her away, and she departed, and, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Well, can you get that picture? Well, he had to do what God said. I, I can't, he, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah initiated it, but God told him to do it, and he obeyed God. In verse 15, and the water was spent uh, in the skins, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Uh, and you, can you understand? She's getting right down to the bitter end now. Uh, and all the water was gone out of the skins. Uh, and she put the, put the child under a shrub where he could receive shade. In verse 16, and she went and sat down apart from, uh, from him a good way off, uh, as it were a bow shot. What are you talking about? A uh, 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 bow and arrow. You can take that bow and you can pull the string back, aim it high. Let it go, uh, and it will fly a, a, a distance out. Uh, and so this was about a, a about a bow shot. Uh, for she said, uh, "Let me uh, uh, let not me see the death of, of the child." Uh, can you understand? She loved the child. Uh, she didn't want to see him die, uh, so she put him out apart from her, uh, knowing what was going to be uh, in her logicness that no water and and here we are, food supply down. Uh, oh, how, we're gonna we're gonna die, uh, and she didn't want to see her child die, uh, and she set apart from him uh, and lifted her voice and wept. She began to cry. And don't you know God hears when you cry out to him? In verse 17, and God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. God has heard him. Can you understand? She got the attention of God. God had a plan for even her son, Ishmael. I want you to know sometimes things seem dark and same thing, same, some things seem over. Let's just put it, it's all over with. But if God made you a promise, he'll bring it to pass. I'm going to tell you, I stood on that many, many times and I've, I've come to the place where I, I just put it in God's hand and I've gone about my life and if, if uh, uh, knowing if he said it, it'll come to pass and I don't have to worry about it. I don't, I'm not going to manipulate and try to make things happen, I give it to God and let God do it. It's on him when he said he would do it. Now he said he's going to make Ishmael a nation as well. Let's read 17 again. And God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of God called unto Hagar out of heaven. She, the, God heard the voice of the lad crying out, crying like a ba like a youngster. He, he heard the voice of the lad and the angel called unto Hagar out of heaven 
and said unto her, uh, What aideth thee, uh, Hagar? Uh, uh, fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Uh, God heard his voice. Uh, you got to understand, uh, he was also Abraham's child. Uh, God dwelled and loved Abraham, uh, and he loved everything around him and everything about him. Uh, so that made it God loved Ishmael as well. Uh, well, let's read in verse 18. Uh, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Uh, can you understand? God has even now given Hagar a word and given her hope. Uh, don't leave your son out there and let him die. Uh, God is saying, I got this. Uh, I'm going to handle this situation. Uh, in verse 19, and God opened her eyes uh, and she saw a well of water uh, and she went and filled the skins with water uh, and gave the lad to drink. Uh, can you get that now? Uh, God always knows what he's doing. Sometimes when we think we're at the bitter end, uh, the very last uh, of how far we can go, uh, God will get your attention and, and he'll point out, uh, he'll point out a well to you uh, and let you know there's living water there. There's water there. There's life sustaining there. It's not over and many times we think it's over uh, and help is just that far away. I'll read 19 again and then uh, 20 and 21. And God opened, opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and lifted the skins with water, and gave the lad drink. Verse 20, and God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. Dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And then, you know, your mind can go many different directions, how he became an archer. There in the wilderness, you got to understand, him and his mom had to survive. So, no doubt, they he was big enough to where he could take a he could take a bow and arrow and kill meat for them, uh, so they they could eat and they could they could live. Uh, uh, so he became an archer. Uh, verse twenty, and God was with the lad, uh, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness uh, and became an archer. Uh, in verse twenty one. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him, uh, a wife, uh, out of the land of Egypt. Uh, well, his mother was an Egyptian, uh, and uh, he took, uh, uh, she took Ishmael, a wife, uh, out of the land of Egypt. Uh, we're going to continue this study on our next session, uh, but I want you to know that I'm glad you're here. All of these things are significant in history uh, and also in the things of God. Uh, you got to understand we are hearing about things that stemmed all the way back to this point, all the way back to Abraham that's happening in the day that we live. You, If you read your newspaper, listen to the news, and all of these things, many of the things that happen, uh, that happen uh, are from the seed of Abraham. And I'm not saying the trouble of the turmoil come from him, but yet the family tree and the generations or the genealogy on, uh, on many sides can go up, can be Traced all the way back to him, uh, from Ishmael back to, uh, 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 down to many of the uh, Islamic nations and, and so forth. Traced back to Abraham and, and the Jewish realm. Uh, tra tra uh, you can trace back to Abraham. Uh, well, let me let, even bring it on down. Christianity, uh, you can trace back to Abraham. Uh, so get this picture now. God knows what he's doing all the time. Uh, he knows exactly what he's doing, uh, and he, he gave a word uh, that all of these things would be, uh, and God always honors his promise. Uh, I want you to know I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to contact me for any reason, uh, you can write me at the Work with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 200. 483 uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, we also have a toll-free telephone number, 1-866-267-0211. Remember, my friends, you can uh, to, uh, pick up one of our CDs. This will be a blessing to you. When you listen to it, you'll find yourself patting your feet and worshiping God. Also, our book, Poems by Chester, Pick up a copy, and you will be a blessing to this memory, uh, ministry. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, God bless you.